YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. So this time we're back in the dark room once again, but this time we're doing black and white. I don't think I've made a single video on this channel about printing in black and white. Got a little bit of content on Instagram about it, but started to do a whole lot of it because honestly, I got a lot of black and white photography now, and I'm really gonna be shooting a lot more of that as well. So I had to get my dark room set up for black and white to ensure that I can print some of those dope shots. So I've been messing around with a couple different things, and today we're gonna talk about caffeinol. So what the hell is caffeinol? Caffeinol is just kind of a made up name for a developing recipe that uses coffee. And in terms of coffee, typically it's all based off of instant coffee because it's the cheapest and it's also typically very processed and into kind of like a very fine ground, which is essential for developing with caffeinol. And caffeinol includes a couple other ingredients, which we'll talk about in a second, but ultimately it gives you a developer that you can use as your developing step. And then, you know, you then do the normal kind of stop and fix afterwards. And everything about the black and white developing process is exactly the same when you're using caffeinol as if you're using Ilfosol or you know, whatever other um, developing agent that you want. And developing, in this case, is for printing, but you can use caffeinol as well to develop film, uh, black and white film specifically. I've only done it once and the results, they worked. Um, there's definitely some big differences between that and developing with normal developer, but we can talk about that in a separate video. So let's jump into the dark room and I'll show you how I made this print. All right, y'all, so basically what I'm gonna do is fill up about 500 milliliters of hot water here. And I'm gonna do hot water because this stuff kind of cools off once it's been sitting around. And once it cools off, it gets less strong. So I'm not gonna be exact, but it's gonna be pretty hot water. And we might make two batches of this, two batches of this eventually, but for now, I'm just gonna make one. So I need six tablespoons of instant coffee. And I think I have just about six tablespoons here, so. We'll give this a bit of a mix. And it smells kind of good already, interestingly enough. I'm not a huge coffee drinker, but I do love the smell of coffee. And this instant coffee is very quick to give you a nice smell. So that's the coffee. And then we're gonna do three tablespoons of this, which is the vitamin C powder. This stuff's a bit pricey when you get it, kind of the 100%, but we'll go in with that. You see it kind of bubbles a little bit. I don't know what that means, but it bubbles. It was fine. So there's that. We'll mix this in here. So that's that. I think we're ready for the last ingredient which is the washing soda. This is washing soda right here. Got the Arm & Hammer brand. Some people can't find this apparently, but in the UK it's called soda crystals. If you go to the supermarket, you should be able to find soda crystals. And in the US, look for washing soda from Arm & Hammer. There's some other brands, but this one at least will be very clear. You'll know that this is the same thing I'm using. This is gonna be about one and a half uh, tablespoons. This stuff's gonna foam up a bit again. As you can see, I'm not being very precise and that's totally fine. See, look, it's already foaming up and I fucked up. I'm just gonna pour it into the thing where I'm gonna develop so I don't waste any of this. This is kind of my trail right here of all the bad stuff, the mess that I made. And there it is, it's still foaming. And as I said, it's still usable, but all you have to do is mix it. When you mix this enough, eventually it will turn into just straight up liquid and the foam will disappear. But for now, you just gotta really work it in there. So as you see now, this looks like liquid. It's not foamy anymore, it looks just like coffee, and now I think we're good. All right, so I got my negative right here, and it's a black and white shot, obviously, uh, 35 millimeter, and it's kind of like wide landscape-y. Um, I like this shot a lot, but it's definitely a bit overexposed, so you'll see some really dark spots on the negative here. Um, so I'm really curious to see how this prints on here because I've never printed with a, something that was kind of this overexposed and therefore it might take a while because it's a very dense image, it might take a lot more light to get through. So I'm going to do a test print, test three different amounts of time 
And then based off of that, then I'll do the follow-up print where you should see the appropriate exposure. So let's go. All right, so our print is done fixing, and as you can see, we have a print. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a wash here, just to get rid of any of that excess fixer, or anything else. And yeah, this is how it works. It's very, very straightforward. Same exact process as when you use normal chemicals. The only difference is the caffeinol is definitely weaker, and therefore takes a lot more time to develop. And then the other big thing you notice is actually the stain on the prints. I don't know how obvious it is here, but this print has a very a distinct light brown stain on it. This is it right here, this is my test print. So we can see here, this particular exposure is probably the best one and it's still overexposed. And this was nine seconds. I think I'm gonna just do one more print at 12 seconds just to get me even closer. And we're gonna call it there. Um, and ultimately I want all of this air to have a lot more contrast and a lot of kind of darker exposure. So we gotta get, let it go longer. And of course here you see extremely blown out, barely any difference between the, the color here and the color there. So yeah, I think 12 seconds might be enough for the next print, but this is also just a test for YouTube. So I'm not gonna create a beautiful kind of final product here. All right, so we got our final print ready, and here we are. Looks a lot better than the other ones. Got a lot more detail, it's much sharper, you can make out what's going on. Still not like an amazing print, because A, I think it needs a bit more exposure time. But uh, as you can see here, you can actually make out what's going on. You can see the people, you can see the Brixton, which is kind of the highlight of the photo with the people standing right on the letters. And yeah, this print probably could use even more time. Um, this is the shadow area of the photo. And the fact that this is still very bright means that there's a lot more exposure that can happen on here specifically. I think we're still pretty blown out here, even though now you actually have detail. You can see the difference between the highlight and the white on the paper. Same thing over here. So I could probably give this another, I don't know, three, four seconds, but I'm not gonna, because again, the point was to show you what you can do with caffeinol. And yeah, I mean, this works. You can definitely develop with caffeinol. Is it ideal? Probably not, but I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. All right, so that was a bit of an interesting experience for me because most of my darkroom videos, as I said, were all for color printing and therefore recording the videos are very different because you know, you don't see the, the actual enlarging steps for the most part and then all the development takes place in that tank and it's in daylight, you know, it's kind of a different scene. In this case, I do have a, a safe light in my bathroom, which is just an LED light that I turn to the red color and I have it very dim in the corner. So you can record some of the video, but of course it's gonna be very grainy and kind of uh, not ideal. So I think for that video, I was shooting an ISO 26,000 on my camera here, because I was using an F4 lens. So not ideal by any means, but it's good enough for now. We'll see if I keep doing a bit more of this black and white printing. So this is the print that I made in the bathroom. And as you can see, this print has a very clear kind of tone to it. And I actually really like this tone, this light brown shade that you get on these prints. And I'm a big fan of it because it really adds an extra element of character to the, to the print and the image. And with the right image, it could really make all the difference. I find that black and white paper, um, especially when you compare it to something like this, is extremely blue. Um, it's very cold and, and that white is just like a super crisp, very blue white. So having something like this that's toned, really makes a difference for me. 
And again, I don't think I'll do this for every print, but I think for certain prints, especially if I do you know, a normal version, quote unquote, I can then whip up some of that caffeinol and do a, a version like this and have both options. And it's a really cool way to stylize your prints and kind of add an extra quality to your black and white printing. So is caffeinol for everybody? Probably not. Um, there's so many things about it that just aren't ideal or efficient. So the developing times are way too long. Each one of those developing rounds was about four and a half minutes. And that's when you start. As it starts to exhaust, the developing time goes up and you could be in there for about six minutes. And additionally, um, it exhausts very fast. So even if you keep up in your time, eventually you just gotta you know, toss it and make a whole new batch. I think with a double batch that I was using there, I could probably do eight individual prints. Um, and that includes test prints and all of that. So it's not very efficient, but if you know exactly what you're doing and you kind of have a plan in mind and you're not super finicky, um, then you can honestly get it done with that. Why would you use caffeinol though? This is kind of where it gets a little bit interesting because there's no really amazing reason to use it. You can say it's more eco-friendly, which technically it is, um, but you're still gonna be using the other items that you have to use, such as the fixer, for example, which may or may not be eco-friendly. So that's kind of one thing. Um, in terms of cost, black and white developers are very, very cheap, the normal stuff. So caffeinol is, I don't think it's gonna be as inexpensive. You know, you have to make this big investment at the beginning to get all the different ingredients. When you add those up and then divide by the number of exposures you can get, I haven't done the math, but my bet is that it's not gonna be as cheap as using just a bottle of, you know, whatever developer you like. So it's not really, you know, a, a money thing. Ultimately for me, I just love the experimentation. I think film photography, for me at least, is all about messing around and playing with every single variable that exists when it comes to creating images like this. So especially if you, if you kind of start with developing and then go all the way through the printing, you can really manipulate all kinds of stuff. And in this case, messing around with coffee for me is just exciting. I love that it's possible, first and foremost. I love that the science behind it is you know, kind of simple, but also very targeted to film photography. And it's just a nice way to change things up. I like messing around, I like doing all kinds of different things. So in this case, I'm happy that this is available. Will I be using caffeine all the time? Definitely not. But like I said earlier, there's gonna be certain shots throughout the next you know, few months or whatever that I can imagine when I take them, I'm like, wow, that's a cool shot and I think that'd look amazing with caffeinol. The other thing I haven't done here is mess around with contrast or anything like that. I have a color enlarger, which means it doesn't have the dedicated kind of contrast um, things you can put under the lens. But if you change the color, so like the magenta and the yellow, if you manipulate those using the color settings on the enlarger, then you can actually change the contrast. The only thing is when you change contrast on black and white, the more filtration you add, the longer your exposure gets. As compared to a black and white enlarger, um, the typical ones where you just add your little contrast thing under the lens, that doesn't affect the exposure time. You can kind of keep the exposure time consistent the whole time and play with your contrast as much as you want. So it's just kind of a quirk of using the color enlarger, but I like having things that are versatile and can be used for a lot of different applications. And this enlarger definitely is that. So I'm gonna keep messing around with this, but I'm really happy that it works. And I think I'm gonna do another video where I develop a strip of film, maybe do half in caffeinol and half in normal black and white developer, and then show you the differences between the two. So that's what I got for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you get inspired to go print. Printing is amazing. And once you are printing, you can do all kinds of stuff. If you enjoyed this video, definitely go ahead and give me a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Till the next video, y'all. Peace.